Hello, everyone. My name is Miss Jackie, and today we have a really good lesson for you. We're going to start with prefixes. Now, a prefix is the part of the word that comes at the very beginning, the first part. Now, not every word has a prefix. So table, te, not a prefix. But there are a lot of English words that have a prefix and this part has its own meaning. So for example, the prefix pre means before. That's why a prefix comes at the beginning of the word. So if pre means before, what does pre-made mean? Right, so it means that something was made before. So a good example is if you buy a cake at the store or at the market. If you did not make it yourself, then it was pre-made. It was made before you bought it. Um, another good word is preview. Preview. So view means to see, to look at something. So a preview means to look before. Any advertisement that you see on TV for a movie is a preview. A movie trailer is a preview. You get to see a little bit before the movie comes out. Um, our next prefix is post. Post. It's the opposite of pre. Post means after. So post pone. Post Home means to do something later than what you had planned. So, for example, if you were planning to go to the cinema at 5 in the afternoon, 5 p.m., and you have too much homework and you have to get it done first, Maybe you postpone the movie until tomorrow. You'll do it, you'll still do it, but you'll do it later. Um, another good word that uses the prefix post is postscript. Postscript. Script means to write. So a post script is to write after. So for a letter, let's say you're writing a letter to your grandma who lives in Hanoi. You're writing a letter and you say, okay, I have to go now. Bye grandma. Well, maybe you forgot to say something. Maybe you forgot to tell her about really good marks on your grade. Maybe you forgot to tell her about a book that you were really excited to read. You might write a PS, postscript. And you might say, PS, I want to tell you about these amazing books I'm reading or this amazing TV show I'm watching or anything like that. Um, our next prefix is 
sub, sub, sub means under, underneath. So a submarine, does anyone know what a marine means? What does marine mean? It means water. So submarine means under water. Um, a submarine is actually a type of boat. I'll show you a picture right now. This is a boat that goes under water. Next, we have submerge. Submerge. Submerge is a verb and it means to go under, usually with water. So you might go to the beach and submerge yourself in water, which really just means you're going to go swim. Um, or you might be making rice and you submerge the rice into water while you cook it. Um, and our last prefix is my favorite prefix. It's co. Co. Co means together. Together. Um, so a co-worker means to work together. All of the teachers that work at STEP are my co-workers. When you have a job, you will surely have co-workers, people that you work with. Then our last word is co-pilot. Co-pilot. I'm sure you remember that pilot means to drive an airplane. They are the ones who fly the airplane. So every plane has one main pilot, the person in charge, and a co-pilot. The co-pilot flies with the head pilot, and in case the head pilot gets sick, the co-pilot can take over. They can um, fly the airplane and land it and make sure that everyone is safe. Um, so prefixes are really, really useful in English. Um, you may not know what a word means, but if you know the prefix in the word, then you might be able to guess. Um, you know that pre means before. So if you see a word that starts with pre, it probably means before something. So that's it for prefixes. We'll go on to one of my favorite topics next, weird English. So I will be the first to admit that English is weird. A lot of times it doesn't make any sense. And I love English. I think it's really fun. It's a really interesting language and you can do a lot of wonderful things with it, but it's very hard to learn. And I think one of the best examples of this is the four letters O-U-G-H. Now, when English was first starting, when it was first being formed and created a thousand years ago, we formed it with four main languages. So English took from Latin, Greek, French, and Germanic languages. So English and English speakers took all of these words, all of these rules from all of those languages and formed one language. But because of that, there are different rules for pronunciation, for grammar, um, based on what those rules were in those other languages. 
Like I said, the best example of this is O-U-G-H. You would think that O-U-G-H would sound the same in all of these words, but it doesn't. It sounds completely different in all of these words. So let me go through them with you. So we have though, though, okay? Then we have through, through, as in there's a tunnel and you start at one end, you go in and you go out. Through. Then we have thought, thought, as in past tense of think. Next we have tough, like someone who's really strong. Then we have plow, as in uh, when you are moving a whole bunch of stuff, you might plow it. Um, a good example is in places where it snows a lot. There's snow covering the ground and people can't drive with that much snow up to here. So a big car might come through and plow the snow and move it off the road. So that's plow. And our last word is hiccup. Hiccup. Like a <gasps> You can't catch your breath. Um, now this isn't the only way to spell hiccup. In America, it's very common to spell it H-I-C-C-U-P. But in a lot of um, different parts of the world, this is how you spell it. So this O-U-G-H, depending on the word, can sound like O, U, A, B, Ow, Up. So it's completely different. English is weird. Sometimes it doesn't make any sense, but that's what we're here for. We're your teachers. We like English. We all think it's really fun. It's really weird. Um, and it's easy, once you learn a little bit of it, to appreciate how weird it is. So if you ever have any questions on something like this, um, any of the other lessons online, or just any English that you've heard or read, you can always come to us. We're always going to be happy to help you. Um, that's it for this lesson today. I hope that you learned something. Let me know if you have any questions in the comments. Before I go, I want to make sure that you know Steck is doing a little competition while everyone is away. Um, we understand that we can't bring anyone here because of the coronavirus. We want to make sure that everyone is safe and that we don't spread the disease as it's already been spread. So we would love to hear from you about how this virus has affected your daily life. Um, what are you doing when you're not at school? Um, are you able to go out at all? Does your family want you to stay inside all day? Um, send us a minute, 30 second clip, something short, um, to tell us how it has affected you. And the best video will get a prize uh, when we are able to get back to school. So thank you for watching. Um, as always, go ahead and like and subscribe for more videos and have a wonderful day.